Hello, it's Scott Manley here. And tonight I am very excited about what may be the first large object to visit us from another star system. About a week ago, a comet was discovered by the Pan Star System, that is, Panoramic Survey Telescope and Rapid Response. This is a pair of uh, six foot, 1.8 meter telescopes in Hawaii that survey the night sky looking for changes. The idea is, of course, they can see things moving and, and uh, tell the rest of the world so they can get follow up. Now, over the last six days, a number of people have followed up getting observations of this object and with that information, with these angular precisions, what you can do is try to fit uh, an orbit to it. And when the mathematicians crunched the numbers and tried to fit an orbit, what they found was the only orbit that fit the observations that had been made was a hyperbolic orbit, an orbit which was coming from deep space, deep interstellar space, and going back to deep interstellar space. The eccentricity was higher than one. In fact, it was up at 1.2 or thereabouts. This is unheard of. Previously, we've seen comets with small hyperbolic uh, you know, eccentricities. The highest would be Comet Bowl in 1980, which had a hyperbolic uh, eccentricity of 1.05. And while people were excited that that might be from interstellar space when they did the math, it showed that it actually flew by Jupiter, which gave it a kick knocked its eccentricity from a much more uh, parabolic trajectory up to this high velocity, kicked it off into interstellar space. And that's actually important because if you think about it, we've seen comets from our star system get kicked into inter interstellar space and therefore it's reasonable to presume that some of the other 100 billion stars in the galaxy are also potentially doing this and there may be a whole whole population of comets sitting out there in deep freeze out in interstellar space. So it's reasonable to expect that we might actually see these things occasionally. And the fact that we haven't seen one is, you know, being something of a mystery, I guess, that we haven't seen one over the, the time that we've been observing. So this being a great can is a great candidate for this. Not everyone is 100% convinced yet. To be clear, with only six days worth of data and not really uh, data from big telescopes, it's entirely possible that errors have been made in the astrometry and the orbit isn't being fit correctly. That being said, time will tell and this is already highly hyperbolic based on these predictions. So it's entirely likely that this is true. This is the real deal. So with an eccentricity of 1.2, its perihelion was in September at a, about one quarter of an AU from the sun. The uh, inclination is about 122 degrees. That means it comes up very high over the sun and is coming back over the top. We discovered it after it flew past the earth and is already on its way out. Its magnitude is quite faint. It was about magnitude 20 when it was discovered and now its magnitude has dropped to about 22. It's rapidly going to disappear from observability very soon. We're not going to be able to send a spacecraft to it. The faint magnitude with the predicted orbit also lets us take a guess at how big this object is. So uh, if you presume that the albedo is about 10%, that is the amount of light it uh, reflects, then you can say that an object that would be about 160 meters across would be large enough to reflect this amount of light. Again, if the orbit gets changed by new data coming in, this estimate will change. We certainly don't have enough data to actually image this, or we don't have enough resolution to image this and figure out just how big it is. People are looking for spectra, and I just heard that a group imaged the object, uh, used multiple images, stacked them on top of each other and found zero evidence of a coma. That is a cloud of gas and dust which is normally associated with a comet which makes them brighter. And this has actually led to the object having its name changed. Originally it was given a comet designation of C2017U1 but now it's been changed to an asteroid designation, that is A2017U1. 
It was originally called a comet because comets are the kind of objects that come in on these highly eccentric orbits that pay a visit to the sun and fly off again, possibly coming back in the future. But um, obviously with the discovery of no coma, it gets converted to an asteroid type object. Now, plugging those numbers in for the orbit also suggests that at infinity, its relative velocity was about 26 kilometers per second. So uh, this is actually significant because small hyperbolic excesses are possibly due to perturbations in the, uh, in the Oort cloud, right? That is, perhaps the tidal forces caused by being near other stars can disturb comets and send them towards the sun with a small extra kick. But to have a kick of 26 kilometers per second would either requ would require a very large object flying through the Oort cloud and we would see that, or it just came in and uh, because the sun, the sun is orbiting the galaxy at about 250 kilometers per second, but it, uh, you know, if you imagine all the objects are kind of orbiting roughly at the same rate, the sun's velocity with respect to its neighbors is more around 30 kilometers per second. So seeing 26 kilometers per second is right in line with it being an object orbiting in the galactic plane roughly in the local group. The orbit plotted back uh, comes from roughly the direction of Lyra. Now, again, that doesn't mean that it came from the constellation of Lyra. That just means the approximate direction it was coming from. Traveling at 26 kilometers per second means that every million years it covers about 85 light years. So this object could have been in space for millions or billions of years easily, orbiting in the galactic disk, just waiting for the right moment or waiting for the, you know, to come this close to a star so it could be seen. So what's next? People are trying to get more data on it. We're trying to get a better orbit. It's fascinating to watch the discovery on this thing. But, you know, really, this is amazing. This is the first large object from interstellar space that has been observed. Now, to be clear, uh, also the Stardust mission, it did find dust that came from interstellar space. The Stardust mission actually flew past a comet with a, a little aerogel collector plate and it was collecting comet grains in it. However, interstellar dust came in at different angles because it was moving at a different velocity. So uh, they've identified a number of interstellar grains and so those have actually been captured and returned. This is a much more substantial object and is therefore rather interesting and that's why we're always excited about these new discoveries. So we'll keep an eye on it, we'll see what happens. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.